You're watching America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. We begin with the growing desperation and devastation following the super typhoon in the Philippines. New video just in from the air shows entire towns destroyed, homes flattened for miles, water seemingly wiped away everything in its path. And now concern is growing over a water and medicine shortage. ABC's Larry Jacobs has the very latest. A team of 90 U.S. Marines in the Philippines providing search and rescue assistance and bringing supplies to a country that desperately needs so much of everything. The ferocious winds and tree-high tidal surges of Typhoon Haiyan destroyed roads, bridges, and homes across a wide swath of the central Philippines. Phone lines are down, power is out, hundreds of thousands are thronging relief centers desperate for life's necessities. We don't have homes. Homes we need, we need shelter, food, light. We don't have, food, we don't have everything. We don't have houses. Aircraft are bringing in some supplies. Soldiers are carrying injured residents to planes, along with the elderly, evacuating them from what looks like a war zone. But it's not enough. The suffering is on a massive scale. The super typhoon turning life into misery for four million people. Some have the grim job of recovering the bodies of countless victims. The death toll is expected to be in the many thousands, but amidst a tide of human suffering, a ray of hope. 21-year-old Emily Ortega went into labor inside the damaged airport control tower in Tacloban. She's fortunate. A doctor is there to help, placing the newborn baby on the woman's stomach, a little girl unaware of the devastation around her. Larry Jacobs, ABC News, New York. And there has been a massive outpouring of tears and prayers from Filipinos who live here in the United States. Churchgoers seen here in Sacramento and across the country are scrambling to send money and supplies to help the countless victims of the typhoon. Many of them still trying to reach friends and family in the hardest hit areas of the Philippines. The last time I talked to them, their house was, you know, the roof just blew out. Aid agencies on the ground are getting a first-hand look at just how dire that situation is. I spoke earlier to Richard Gordon, chairman of the Red Cross in the Philippines, about the desperate need for emergency supplies. We are able to get into the area that has been thoroughly affected, heavily affected. And because of that, we can now provide uh, medicine, food, uh, a little bit of temporary shelters, and of course, water. Food items were for 25,000 people, as well as 10,000 of ready-to-eat meals. So slowly but surely, we're getting in and we're also clearing the path, we're clearing the area of debris so that our people can go in. The government is also there. We're doing everything we can to get to the victims very, very fast. And I think the national, the, the, the international community is beginning to help out. I know the Americans have sent the military, but now uh, there are a lot of other countries that have already signified their intention to help. It's a lot of effort that has to be made, and we will need a lot of resources, a lot of equipment, a lot of food, a lot of shelter. Once again, our thanks to Richard Gordon. A much weakened Haiyan made landfall in North Vietnam this morning as a tropical storm, but winds were still gusting at nearly 100 miles an hour. About 600,000 people were evacuated ahead of the storm, and some cities are bracing for widespread flooding. At least six people have died there so far. All schools in Hanoi are closed. The Army has been mobilized. Be sure to stay with ABC News for the latest on the recovering in the Philippines. We will have a live report coming up on Good Morning America.